Well, good morning and welcome as we gather for our online worship here on Sunday, October the 30th. Pray that you've had a blessed week and an enjoyable week, and I hope that you enjoyed our anniversary service last week. Next Sunday will be our Remembrance Day service, so uh, it's one of those services that we try to tie it in with the sacrifice that our soldiers past and present have made and are making today. So I look forward to that service each and every year and pray that you'll look forward to it as well. Today we're finishing off our series that has carried us through the month of October when our hearts are not thankful. So we've learned so many things and of course we have one more thing to learn through this series. I hope you've been enjoying it and it's been touching you and inspiring you in different ways. Also, if you haven't already done so, we're running out of time for the Samaritan's Purse, Operation Christmas Child Shoe Boxes. So, if you haven't picked up your shoe box, we need them in by next week. So, it is time to make that decision if you are wanting one to reach out, contact us, and we can get it to you, and hopefully you can get it back in time. And also, if you're joining us next Sunday in-house at our church, then we are doing our Food Bank Sunday. It's always the first Sunday of the month. So, lots going on. I hope that you are going to enjoy today's service. We're going to start off with our opening prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, it is time to worship. And we are just so thankful for that because we know that you are going to be with us in this next hour or so. We're going to sing. Sing songs of praises to you. We're going to pray, lifting up our prayers and our requests. We are going to listen and we are going to learn. And we are just with such joy and thanksgiving. So we just pray, God, that the best of us is given to you in this time of worship. All of ourselves, all of our hearts, all of our minds, all of our devotion, we offer this prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Well, let us continue our worship with welcome to this house, followed by holy, 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 and our opening hymn for today. <laughs>
you are God, holy and perfect, and that we are your children, not perfect, but created in your image. And it's that, that truth that reminds us, because we're created in your image, we should be following in your ways and your patterns, knowing that you desire righteous living, but we don't always embrace righteous living. That you desire that we follow your will, but we don't always follow your will. Sometimes our will wins out. That we should be patient upon your timing, but sometimes we're very impatient with respect to the timing and demand everything in our timing. You encourage us to forgive just as you have forgiven us, but that is one we struggle with day in and day out at times as so many things happen where people say things, people do things, and all of a sudden so many feelings come into our hearts and we struggle. We struggle with maybe anger, with unforgiveness, with just some thoughts that should not be in Christ-like ways. So God, for any ways that we have sinned and erred through this week, we once again come to you in this time of prayer and confession and lay them before you. They're lifted up to you now. They're placed before your throne. And you are saying, my child, I forgive you. I forgive you. And those are precious words. They are blessed words. They are words that only can be spoken by you. And they are words that are a true gift to us. Help us to embrace them. Help us to hold on to them. Help us to be your thankful children knowing that you are giving us the most thankful gift of your forgiveness. Help us to be forgiving. Help us to be loving. Help us to be embracing. We offer this prayer in Christ's name, who taught each and every one of us when to pray, to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, we have been journeying through our memory verses, and we've gone through so many to this point, haven't we? And today, we're at Psalm 148. And the writer of this psalm is anonymous, but one thing he wants to point out is this, is that all that God has created should praise him. And this is what he says in Psalm 148, verse 5, Let every created thing give praise to the Lord, for he issued his command, and they came into being. And isn't that interesting how he goes back to the beginning, when God spoke, let there be light, and it came into being. How God spoke and created each day, created the heavens and the earth, the seas and the land, and he created us as well in his image. And as this psalmist says, what should be a natural response for everything that has been created by God to praise him? And at this time of year, we've been seeing one way that nature praises God through the beauty of the leaves. Sometimes we see how nature glorifies God and praises God through the beauty of a sunrise or a sunset. Or maybe gazing up at the stars in the heavens at night. Nature praising God for creating it. And sometimes we see it in the majesty and majestic movements of animals, aren't we? 
how God created them and how they are fulfilling and doing as God created them, giving praise. And then we have to think about us, our nature. Are we doing the same? God created us. And that's what we need to acknowledge, isn't it? That God created us. And because He is the Creator and we are the created, that everything we should do should give praise to the Lord. And I think this is something that would be a great memory verse for us to start off each day with. Let everything created give praise to the Lord. Imagine if we did this and started off each day doing this. That would be a guiding principle, wouldn't it? In our work, in our play, in the people we meet, in everything we do. Let us make sure that we, as God's created, are doing everything to give praise to the Lord. And that will help us to be more thankful, more appreciative, a blessing to others, just as God has blessed us. So, let us take this forward as a memory verse from Psalm 148, verse 5. Let every created thing give praise to the Lord, for He issued His command, and they came into being, including you and me. That is our memory verse for today. Well, for our story time and pondering time today, we're going to be looking at the story of the ten lepers in my sermon today. And as you know, nine didn't come back to thank Jesus, but one did. And I got thinking about those numbers. Nine and one, one and nine. And naturally, Sometimes when we think of those numbers, we think of this, don't we? 911, our cry for distress. Where we go to in need of an emergency, don't we? And let's say we're in need of an ambulance, or let's say we're in need of police, or in need of a fire truck. We call 911. And then there's a pause, a time frame between the call and the response before they come to arrive. So, we know there's 911 that we're very familiar with, but it consists of two numbers, doesn't it? It consists of the number 1, and it consists of the number 9. And there's a gap in between. Just like there's a gap in between by the time we call 911 and we get a response, there's a gap between 1 and 9. And basically eight numbers, isn't it? So, there is a gap. Now, let's say if we did it a bit differently. That with that gap, then we went nine to one. That'd be a little bit different, wouldn't we? Because we'd be going backwards. And let's say we had to go from nine all the way to a hundred, then to one. We'd be going 91, 92 numbers before we would complete that. That's a huge gap. So, I got thinking again. Well, let's if we join the numbers together. So, one way we can join the numbers together is with 1, 9 making 19. Or, we can reverse it and make 91 instead. And as you can see, when we place the numbers together, it's even a wider gap, isn't there? Now, we are talking about 72 numbers between 19 and 91. As we see, all it takes is putting 9 first and 1 second. And I thought to myself, isn't it interesting how the gap widens when we put 9 in front of 1? And it's a reminder to us of what happens when we don't make God number one in our lives. As we know, the Bible's very specific about that, isn't it? If we are going to follow Jesus, He has to be our number one priority. We can't serve two masters, no. We can only serve one. And I think it shows us what happens if we try to put anything ahead of our love for Jesus. There's a gap that begins to widen, that begins to separate us from Jesus. So let's take, for instance, if you had nine other things that was taking priority in your life over worship, 
over your relationship with Jesus. Do you see how there's a big gap that's starting to form in your life? But there's a difference if you put Jesus first and put the other nine things next. The gap separates, doesn't it? It's not as big as a gap. And I think the question we need to think about today is this. How are we handling our one and our nine? We're going to see in the story of the lepers how that situation played out one and nine with regards to giving thanks. But we all have priorities in a day. And we have to decide who's going to come first. Which priority is going to come first? Is it going to be our relationship with Jesus and all the other nine fall in after that? Or are we going to make the number nine first? And then Jesus has to fit in all the rest after that. You see what's going to happen in our lives? If we try to take that approach, the more we put nine things in front of our relationship for Jesus each day, we're going to discover that the gap between Him and us begins to widen and widen and widen. And is that what we want? Is that the best way to live? Is that what's going to bring us closer to Jesus? I think we know the answer. And I think we need to ponder, don't we? How are we living life? Are we putting one at the beginning of each day, our love for Christ, and putting the other nine priorities behind it? Or are we putting nine first, all the other priorities, and putting Jesus last? It makes a difference on the gap between us and Jesus. Story time. Pondering time. Well, let us continue now as we sing our very next hymn. any crannies of our hearts with your truths, with your lessons, so that we can be filled even more, touched by you, inspired by your truths. We offer this prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Well, the passage we're going to look at today is from Luke 17, verses 11 through 19. And it's the story of the ten lepers, how one day Jesus came to their village, their town, and they were on the outskirts, remember? When they saw Jesus, they cried out, 
Jesus, Master, have mercy upon us. And Jesus told them to go and show themselves to the priest. And on the way they were healed. And we discovered how one of them developed a thankful heart as a result. Luke 17, verses 11 to 19 is our passage today. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to well, God. Well, during the month of October, we've been focusing on our series called When Our Hearts Are Not Thankful. And we've learned so much, haven't we? We started off by learning from Naomi that when our hearts are not thankful, sometimes bitterness can creep in, especially as we go through the hurts of life. Then we learn from Cain that when our hearts aren't thankful, one of the problems is it not only affects our attitude and our giving to God, but we fail to see God's goodness in his giving to us. Then we looked at David, and in particular, Psalm 30. We saw the highs, we saw the lows, we saw the good moments and the not-so-good moments. And what did David remind us? To keep praising through the pain. Not to remain silent, but to make sure that we are praising God. And then last week, we looked at Miriam. And remember, we started off when she was just seven years old, standing at the water's edge and developed a thankful heart. And the scars, the wounds she would have developed over the next 80 years. But when she was standing at the water's edge 80 years later, when God parted the Red Sea and delivered them from the Egyptians, once again, we see a thankful heart. And why? What did it do for her? It allowed all the wounds and the scars to be healed and to become part of a story that God wanted her to share. So, when we started off this series, you probably thought to yourself, well, if Dean is going to do a series when your hearts are not thankful, at some point he's got to include the story of the ten lepers. And naturally, it did have to be included. Now, when we think about it, to be a leper back in those days and times, you had very little to be thankful about. And we're reminded of that when we looked at a story of Naaman in our previous series. But... Why did they not have a lot to be thankful about? Well, it depended on the kind of leprosy they had. Because you see, it could be contagious or not contagious. But if it was a contagious form, then they were forced to live outside towns and villages and colonies of lepers. And why do I say they had little to be thankful about? Well, there's only two ways to leave such a colony if you were assigned there. Either by death, or, if you were lucky enough, fortunate enough, blessed enough, that it went into remission. But here was the life for them. If they were ever just venturing out and about, then, if somebody came upon them, they would have had to shout, unclean, unclean, so people wouldn't come into contact with them. And, if somebody recognized them as a leper, sometimes here is what they would do. They'd pick up stones and begin to throw them at that leper to try to keep them at a safe distance. So as you can see, these lepers had very little to be thankful about, and I doubt in the beginning their hearts were thankful. But one day, they saw Jesus approaching, and they recognized him immediately. And why did we say that? Well, they called him by name, Jesus. And they not only recognized him by name, they recognized what was so unique about Jesus, because they said, Jesus, Master. 
But they also recognize something else about Jesus. His ability to give hope. His ability to heal. Because that explains why they said what they did next. Have mercy on us. Now, can you imagine a leper in a colony hearing a story of how Jesus healed another leper? Wouldn't that give a glimmer of hope? Wouldn't they say, if just Jesus would come into our village, what if that happened? Would we get that same gift, that gift of healing? And you can tell in their words, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Yes, is a cry for help. But isn't their faith implied in it? Realizing that Jesus can heal them? Realizing there is hope when Jesus is with you? Do you see? There was faith on their part. And you begin to realize Jesus saw it. Because Jesus paused when he heard them say this. And then it explains why Jesus said what he did next. Now go and show yourselves to the priests. And it makes perfect sense because according to the Levitical laws, the only way a leper who maybe had his leprosy go into mission or was healed could reintegrate into society is if he was examined by a priest and declared fit, declared clean to be able to reintegrate into society. So as we see, it makes sense what Jesus said to them. But, but, there was something he didn't say that was being implied. And what was that? It's this. I want you to walk in faith first. And then, if you show that you trust me, watch what happens. And why do I say that? Why do I say that Jesus was implying when he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priests, to walk in faith first? Because were they healed when Jesus told them to go and show themselves to the priests? No. That's not how the sequence of events worked. Remember the sequence. It started off with them saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy upon us. It's the second thing that happened is Jesus looked at them and said, Now go and show yourselves to the priests. And then, as they went along, it was then that they were healed. Do you see the sequence? When Jesus told them to go and show themselves to the priests, they were not healed yet. It happened somewhere along the way. Now, was it just after they took their first few steps in walking in faith? Or did they have to get out of sight of Jesus? Or maybe it happened as they got closer and closer and closer to the priests who would examine them. We don't know at what point that Jesus healed them. But here's what we do know. They were fully aware when Jesus did. Did they just look down and see that their skin was now clean? Or did they feel the surge of Jesus' power just go from head to toe <coughs> in that was the healing that they needed in that moment. We don't know. We just know they were fully aware that they were healed. And we're told this, that one of them, one of the ten decided to come back to Jesus, thank him personally, kneel down and worship Jesus, and then give God the glory. Now, as I said before, it's very unlikely that these ten lepers had a thankful heart before Jesus arrived. But it would appear that after they were healed, at least one of them had a heart that changed. A heart that became thankful for what Jesus did. And why do we say that? Because Jesus recognized it. As he pointed out, why has only one come back to give glory to God? Jesus was fully aware that out of the ten, only one returned with a thankful heart. As we see, this is another one of these stories that ties in so well with our series when our hearts are not thankful. Because as we dig deep into this passage, we discover two truths when it comes to when our hearts are not thankful. Here's the first one. If our hearts are not thankful, Jesus is fully aware. Because wasn't he fully aware in this situation which of the one's hearts were thankful and which ones weren't? Because that explains why he said, Didn't I heal ten men? 
Where are the other nine? Isn't it interesting? Whether we have a thankful heart or not, we experience so many blessings, so many good things from Jesus. But here's what Jesus is watching. After he's given us a blessing, after he's done something special for us, has it changed our heart? Has it moved our heart to become more thankful? And as we see, Jesus is fully aware. He knew exactly which one had a thankful heart and the other nine did not. And he's fully aware when it comes to you and I. That if he does something special, something wonderful, has it moved our heart to become even more thankful? That's the first thing we need to understand when it comes to this story. Jesus is fully aware if our hearts are not thankful. That's one lesson we learn. But here's the second lesson that Jesus points out in this story. That if our hearts are not thankful, we will miss out on learning and growing in our understanding of Jesus. Because do you remember what Jesus said to this one leper? After he returned, after he worshipped Jesus, he said to him this, Stand up, go, your faith has healed you. Now, I pointed out earlier that when Jesus told them to go and show themselves to the priests, he was basically telling them to walk in faith at that moment. He didn't say it in his words, but that's what was being implied, wasn't it? Now, were they conscious of that? Or did they just go because Jesus ordered them? They were walking in faith, whether they realized it or not. But afterwards, Jesus gave a deeper insight into this one man who had a thankful heart, didn't he? To tell him that it was your faith that has healed you. And imagine what that learning would have done for him moving forward. Can you imagine how he would have applied it to the rest of his life? Well, if walking in faith healed me, think about what walking in faith can also do for me. If I walk in faith, I will know that Jesus is always there for me. If I just walk in faith, what do I have to be afraid of or worry about? If I just walk in faith, I know that Jesus will always be there to provide for me. If I just walk in faith, I know I'll be given the wisdom I need to make the right decisions for my life. Do you see what this insight would have done for him? It would have given him a deeper understanding about who Jesus is and helped him to have a stronger faith moving forward in his life. And it makes sense, doesn't it? If Jesus sees that we have a thankful heart after he's done something special, don't you think he's going to reveal some more truths, some more lessons to us as a result? So there we see two more very important truths when it comes to when our hearts are not thankful. First, that Jesus is fully aware. And second, that we will learn more if our hearts are thankful. Now, we see stories like this in Scripture often, where we see various people, interact with Jesus at the same time. And we see one response and we see a completely different response. You know, take for example the two thieves on the cross. There they were, one on the right, one on the left. One made a profession of faith and the other didn't. And here we see another story that compares and contrasts reactions between people who are interacting with Jesus. Ten lepers experience this exact same gift all of them were given the gift of healing. But, as we see, only one developed a thankful heart as a result. Now, you might be saying to yourselves, Well, Dean, how do you really know that? Maybe the other nine people just said, Praise God! Or, Thank you, God! I'm sure they did. I'm sure they did. But as we see here, that Jesus was the one who pointed out that where were the other nine? That one's heart was changed, but the other nine's hearts weren't changed. That is what we need to understand. This is Jesus pointing this out to us. And we probably look at a story like this and say, Well, I've heard it before, Dean, and I know I'm the one. But let me ask you, are you the one? Or are you really more like the other nine? And what do I mean by that? Yes, I'm sure the nine lepers who were healed said, thank you, God. 
said, praise God. Thank you, this is gone from my life. But is that enough to show that we have a thankful heart? Not according to this passage. And not according to Jesus. That we just can't pay lip service to show that we have a thankful heart. That it must be backed up and reflected in our behaviors and actions too. Because look at the actions of this one leper who developed a thankful heart. He showed it by wanting to spend time with Jesus in person. He showed he had a thankful heart by wanting to kneel down and worship Jesus for who he is. He wanted to show he had a thankful heart by giving this as an opportunity to give glory to God. And he wanted to show this was a thankful heart by learning and growing in his faith as a result. So, with all of that in mind, to see it's just not lip service. We need to show a thankful heart in our actions. Let me ask you these questions. When Jesus does something special for you, do you just pay lip service? Or do you go to Jesus and say, I just want to spend time with you. So you go in prayer. Or you just sit and be quiet and say, Jesus, I just want to spend time with you. Or let's say, Jesus does something very special for you. Do you just say, thank you, Jesus, lip service? Or does it make you go to worship? Make you embrace him in worship? And just say, this is where I need to be each and every Sabbath. Or, when Jesus does something good for you, do you just remain silent? Maybe say, thank you for the moment and not give glory to God? Or do you find ways to share that story so that God is given the glory? And if Jesus does something really good for you, do you just pay lip service? Or do you take time and say, Jesus, you see this thankful heart? Help me to learn from this. Help me to grow from this so I become closer to you and I have a stronger faith. Depending how you answer those questions will really determine, are you the one? Or are you more like the nine? And if you found out that you are more like the nine, I think it's just important, first and foremost, to acknowledge it. To say, yeah, i got to be honest. I'm the nine, I'm not the one. And secondly, I think we need to repent. And say, sorry, Jesus. Sorry that I have not developed a more thankful heart because you've done such incredible things for me. And then... Let's make sure we follow in the example of the one leper. To make sure we just don't pay lip service, but that we develop a thankful heart and it's shown in our actions by spending more time with Jesus. By making sure we're out and worship Him Sunday after Sunday, Sabbath after Sabbath. To make sure we find those moments as we're led to give the glory to God. And to make sure that we learn from every moment. Here we are at the end of this series. And after five weeks, we have learned so much, haven't we? Make sure that if our hearts are not thankful, to realize that bitterness will sit in. That if our hearts are not thankful, that we're going to realize that it's going to affect our attitude towards giving to God. And our ability to see God giving to us. To see from David how important it is to praise through the pain, otherwise our hearts will remain unthankful. To understand from Miriam that if we stand at the water's edge, and God has done something great to develop a thankful heart, to carry it forward in our lives, and realize that God will heal our wounds, He'll heal our scars, and they'll become a part of a story to share. And finally today, to realize we just cannot only pay lip service. Let's make sure that we show how much our hearts are thankful by showing it in our actions and our behaviors. One thing we do know is Jesus is fully aware if our hearts are thankful. And if they're not, then one day, Jesus may just say to us, Where have you been? Haven't I done for you? what I've done for others. They've come back. They've shown a thankful heart. Why haven't you? Tough words to hear. Better to respond now than to wait until Jesus gives those words to you or I. 
God bless. And all that. feeling your warmth, feeling your grace, feeling your love, feeling your blessings just showering down upon us. And we know, God, that it's been time well spent. And we also realize that maybe we need to spend a little bit more time through the course of a week with you as well. Whether it's in our daily devotions, whether it's in our prayer time, whatever. Because we need to show with our actions that our hearts are thankful. So we thank you for the series that we've been on, and we thank you for all the lessons and learnings, and we know, God, that something that we should always have is a thankful heart, because we have a God who is the best, a God who fills us with thanksgiving, and a God who deserves our best. So thank you for this series, God. We pray this day for the many going through health issues. We know many have COVID, others might be having some serious illnesses, maybe awaiting surgeries. We pray for them in their situations. We pray that the surgeries will happen at your perfect timing and that there will be healing that flows out of them. We also pray for those who might be struggling with cancer or other health issues, that God, you will heal them just like you did the lepers in our story today. 
We pray for the many who are struggling to make ends meet right now, God. We know that the food banks have high demands, that many are noticing that the high price of groceries, and that it's less income to try to make ends meet. So we pray for those going through struggles at this time, God, that they will know that you will be there for them. They'll see your hand of grace. They'll see your blessings and know to continue just to walk in faith. We pray for the grieving. We know many have lost loved ones through COVID. There may be others are just grieving other circumstances in their life. A loss of job, a loss of a relationship, maybe just a change in life. And we just pray for the grieving that you will hold them close, that they will know that you are guiding them through those most difficult and darkest of days. We pray over our children in our schools. We know that they carry a lot of different stresses than maybe we did when we were that same age. Whether they're in grade school or high school, we just pray over our children and just ask for your blessing upon them. We also pray, God, for our leaders. We know the situations, the difficult scenarios that our leaders face day in and day out. And we just pray that they will look to you for guidance and wisdom and realize that you're the one who puts them in those places. And we continue our prayers over Ukraine. We know that situation continues on. There's still so much uncertainty. There's still so much unknown, so much bloodshed. And we just pray that peace will come, God. Continue to watch over and provide for that. Be with each one of us, God. Watch over our homes. Watch over our lives. Watch over our families. And we just pray, God, that we will be a people of thanks and filled with thanksgiving for you and others. We offer this prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Well, let's continue now with singing our closing hymn. <laughs>
encourage you in some way. And we're just so thankful that you tune in week in and week out. And as I always share, like if you are ever ready to come back to in-house worship, remember we are called to be the body of Christ. We're called to be in community. So if you are looking for that time, yeah, just know that we provide a very safe environment for you. So I look forward to maybe seeing some of you who watch online to join us in-house and to experience worship live, the music live, and just the joy of being together with other Christians in fellowship and in worship. Well, we're going to continue on a new series next week, and it's looking at our tomorrows. And it's very different from the series we looked back in June of What's Next. It's going to be looking at specific passages from Scripture that teaches us how we look at our tomorrows. So that's going to carry us on to the start of Advent. So, hope you will look forward to that. Again, with each new series, we have some anticipations. What am I going to learn? How much am I going to grasp from it? After the benediction, we will sing our Go Now, and we'll look at The God of Hope Be With You will be our benediction piece, followed by O Canada, our ongoing tribute to our frontline workers. And now the benediction. May the road rise up to greet thee. May the wind always be at your back. May the sun shine warmly upon thy face and the rain fall softly upon thy fields. And until we meet again, may God hold each one of us safely in the palm of his hand. God bless and amen and we will see you next time. Have a great week.